Good morning, everyone. This is Cassie Stumo. I am the Marketing Specialist here at EAC. Thanks for joining us today for our webinar. We'll start off today with an introduction of EAC and then our Technical Account Manager, Bill Schlund, will present on creating customizing templates in Creo. Everyone gets a recording of the session pending any technical difficulties. Um, there will be a short survey that appears once the webinar is over. So hang tight once we're done and drop your questions in the queue along the way. Um, and we'll try to get them answered uh, after the demo. First up, I'll tell you a little bit about who we are. At EAC, our mission is to transform the way companies design, manufacture, connect to, and service their products. Um, we're more than just a value-added reseller for PTC. We've partnered with them for over 20 years with experts in 22 areas of product development. You can go on to the next slide. Um, we're located all over the US and then our headquarters is now in Minneapolis. Next slide. Um, and then we offer our customers everything they need for product development from CAD and simulation software uh, for the full product design process software for managing service documentation, and software for managing product data. Um, we assist with design and engineering projects um, and offer webinars and PTC certified training courses for continuous learning. Uh, we also implement the industrial internet of things and augmented reality into business strategies to jumpstart initiatives around digital transformation and connecting all things in your company. Uh, we also offer customers uh, Form Labs desktop SLA printers, um, including the Form 3 for engineering parts and prototypes, the Form 3B for biocompatible dental materials, and the Form 3L for larger SLA prints. Um, so we really try to make sure that you remember that EAC is the company you need um, to partner with to get all of the technology you need at the forefront um, to make your team successful. I'll go ahead and hand things over to Bill so he can get started. Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Bill Schlund, and I'll be going through uh, creating drawing templates. So I think hopefully all of us are familiar with uh, how useful a start part is to, to Creo for creating parts or assemblies. It helps set up a lot of uh, you know, important things and leads to consistency from part to part or assembly to assembly. So the same thing is true for drawings. Uh, we can create a start part for a drawing that really comes under the heading of drawing templates. So anytime we put a part in a drawing template or an assembly, it sets up the same views, shows the same things the same way, and basically saves us a lot of work of that setup. So we're going to talk about creating a drawing template. I'll create one for you. Uh, we'll add some views to it, and I'll talk a little bit about some config dot pros that uh, kind of control uh, where you find those templates. So I have Creo 6 up here and I'll start off by creating a drawing template. So I just go under new and I'll say let's create a drawing. <clears throat> I'll give it a name so I'll call it like um, C template and we'll say do not use the default template because we're going to make one. So I create this um, I'm going to say, let's put it, let's make it empty and we'll put it on a C size format, let's say. So we'll use a C, and then I'm just using the default one from a low point to Creo. So here we have our C size format, no views or anything set up. So to access or to get at the functionality for creating a drawing template, you go under tools. You'll notice there's a button right here called template. So when I do that, it puts me into template mode. Now I have a series of commands that I can use to create my drawing template. Uh, the ones over here, we can create a new sheet in a drawing template. We can set what formats we have on there. Uh, we can move or copy sheets around. This overlay capabilities, we can copy in views from and kind of overlay them on a drawing sheet here, uh, maybe from another drawing, from a layout, from Pro Diagram if you have that. Uh, when that type of stuff is brought in, it's brought in a kind of a read-only format, so you can't edit it, but it's just displayed there. And then uh, as those parts change or evolve, um, obviously this will update here. This other part here, import uh, drawing data, that's where we can import maybe IGIS or STEP or some other things that we might want to include in our drawing template. But uh, this is basically the, the main portion of it where I create a template view. 
So I'm going to click on that, and then we have this nice menu that kind of displays uh, the different things that we can have displayed in a template view. So the first one is going to be template view number one. Again, I can name it whatever I want. It's going to be a general view, but what I'm going to say is use the front view. That's what we're going to use that orientation. So assuming that all our parts have a front view or a view named front in them, it will make use of that. Uh, we can use a combination uh, state if we wanted to do that. Uh, we can use simplified representations and explode state, display some cross sections, and uh, also place the arrows for cross sections. And then over here, we can modify some other things. So in this particular um, front view that I want to have here, I'm going to say, you know, we'll just use the front. I won't use any of these other options. Under the scale, <clears throat> I'll say, let's just use a scale of one. We'll do it kind of a full-sized part when we place that there. We can use a process step. If any of you have uh, advanced assembly, there's process for assemblies capability there. We can make a series of steps. We can display those here at this time. Under model display, um, I'm going to say no hidden. Let's have a hidden display for that. We'll display tangent lines. And then if we're showing dimensions, we can create some snap lines and say dimensions here. But we're just going to, I'm going to be using this for actually for an assembly. So I'm not going to say display any uh, dimensions or anything at this for this point. And then I say place the view. So I click on that and it attaches a little uh, icon to my um, mouse and I'll just place it here. So this is that first view. You notice it's just a representation, um, just a generic one. Obviously the real view will be replaced. Uh, the real front view will be replaced here. So now we have our first view placed. Um, let's go and add a second one. And in this case, and it's not like regular placing a drawing. I don't just pick up here and say project, but here I'd say I want to create a projection view. And so now it'll be based off of this. And um, under model display, we can say, let's have it uh, no hidden. And um, I'm going to say turn on uh, dimensions. <clears throat> and I'll show you something a little bit later. It'll be kind of interesting, I think. Um, but I'm going to say show dimensions for uh, an assembly that really doesn't have any dimensions, right? Because I've made it and aligned everything, and there's really no dimensions to display there. But I'm going to say, okay, let's take um, that view, and we'll place it you know, up here. So we want our top view maybe to be placed there. Um, then we'll say let's add um, another view, and we'll say let's create one. We'll create another projection view. So we're going to be creating our right side view. And uh, yeah, I don't have to name it right, right? Because if I place it to the right side, it'll project it in that uh, direction. So again, under display, I'm going to say no hidden. And uh, same with all of this. In this particular example, though, I'm going to say let's use a cross section. And we'll use uh, section A. Cross section A. It could be, it's kind of not case sensitive, but we'll say let's do that and maybe show some. Um, the cross -se section hatching. And then where do we want the arrows to be displayed? Well, I'm going to place it in the right view over here. So maybe I want to put the arrows in the top view up here. So I'll say let's place the arrows in template view number two. So we're creating view number three. We're putting the arrows in view number two. And uh, then we can say let's place that. We'll place them right there. So now I have three different views placed. And uh, maybe I'm going to place maybe an isometric view up here. So again, template view. Um, this will be a general view in this particular case. So I'll place him um, in this particular one. Let's use a simplified rep. We'll say one that's called no underscore hardware. And um, yeah, that should be pretty good. Uh, and let's leave this under the display. We'll just not have him hidden line, but we'll keep him uh, using the environment, kind of like a shaded view of that. And so we'll place um that particular view i'll place him right up uh, over here there we go so view four is placed up there so now we have a front a top a right side with a section and our regular uh, isometric view i'm going to go over here uh, and say let's make a new sheet and in this particular sheet i'm going to say uh, let's go in in place Another view, right? So another template view. And um, this one will be this time a general view. And we're going to call it ISO. 
I probably should call my other one that. So I'm going to have to go back to him and do that. So this will be an ISO view. And let's use an explode state. So uh, we have, let's say, a standard explode state called explode one. And I'll display that there. And um, yeah, let's say, let's show some balloons too. So I'll place that view maybe in the center. And maybe we'll also say, let's change the scale and we'll make it a scale of one. Okay. So now we want to put, we're going to show balloons, we need a table. All right. So I'm going to go under tables. I'll say, let's grab a table. I'm just going to grab stuff that's out of the box, grab a generic table that we have uh, from Creo and the quick tables. We'll place him there. And um, <clears throat> in our particular table that we have here, one of the things I might want to do is maybe make some modifications here. So I'm just going to, let's grab this column here and we'll change its width, make it just a little bit wider, maybe 20 characters in case we have longer part names. And one of the things we'll take a look, we'll go over to tables here and, and take a switch our dimensions. The default one calls up the common name here in this column. So I'm going to switch that and use the word description, right? We have a user defined parameter in our start part called description. I want that to show up here, not just the common name of the part. So for this, I can just click on this and say assembly member uh, user defined and just call it description. So now we have our table pretty much set up. I'll switch the views back. Now, I, back here, I'm going to go back and edit this guy for a second because I did forget to say that I want it to be the ISO view, right? And uh, that should be good. We're using our state here for no hardware. So if there are any nuts or bolts or brackets or things that we want to turn off, we can do that. So now we have our template set up. And um, we can go over here and we can say file and save this. We can also save it in a directory of other templates. So this would be good for um, an assembly because I have an exploded view and I have a bill of material over here on sheet number two. I'd also maybe make one for parts, maybe different kinds of parts. So again, you can have multiple different types of templates also with different formats and, uh, and use those. So let's, um, let's call up a part to use here. So I'm going to open up carburetor part. So this is a carburetor for like a small, uh, like a gas drill or something like that. This is the, the part of interest for us. So the thing that I want to do is um, go over here and say, let's take a look at how this part was set up. So I'm going to look at its the different names. And so I have, you know, a top view, I have a front view. That's good. I also made one called ISO. Remember for our exploded view and also our isometric view. I don't have that here. So I'm going to say, let's just add that guy in, in here for now. So, so typically, you'd have this already set up in your start part. But um, I'm going to say, let's add our ISO view. So now if we look under our views, we have an isometric view. Uh, second, I'm going to go in and uh, take a look at something. I mentioned this before. I created some annotations. So here's the default one, but I created a combination uh, state for the top view like this, and I put these dimensions on there. So I, these are created dimensions. Now you notice when I created my template, there was an option to say create a combination state, and I could have put this in. But what I found out is if I use the top view and I have a combination state that uses that top view, those dimensions will be displayed anyway. I don't know if it's a bug, but it displays them. So I don't really have to call out that combination state if I have the view uh, oriented that way. So anyway, that's the way that one works. So even though I created this, it will use these dimensions, but I don't have to in particular uh, call that guy out. Then let's go and take a look at uh, cross section. So we'll go back to our model here. I do have a cross section called cross section A. So if I select that and activate it, we can see it here. Okay. So here's our cross section. And then finally, if we take a look at our assembly this way, um, we'll kind of zoom in a little bit. I've created a simplified rep uh, that is called no hardware. So if I activate that, all the hardware gets turned off. And that'd be typical something that you might have in a start part, right? Where we want to turn off 
you know, kind of purchased components or things like that. So we have that. And then we also have an explode state called explode one. Then that'll explode out our part. So if I show that, there's our explode one. So now I have pretty much everything I did. Now I kind of hacked around with this a little bit. Typically your start part would have all this information in it, but just kind of to emphasize that the information that the template is calling out does need to be in the part, otherwise it won't show up. So with that, I'm gonna call up and make a drawing for this part. I'm gonna say, let's create a drawing for our assembly. I'm gonna say, don't use the default template because we're gonna use ours. Um, we save it under a template file in this particular case. Let's see what I'm gonna say. Use a template, <laughs> browse. So here's our template and I'll say, okay. And so here we see the top view, remember? I didn't even call out, remember? that combination step, but it's still showing us. It's also showing the arrows here, right, for our cross-section view that we see down here. Here's our ISO view that we created at the scale of one. And if we go to sheet number two, we see the bomb balloons and the table already created for us. So you can see this saved me a lot of time. I did have to set up the template, but now for every assembly that I use, um, I'm gonna be able to get these views reproduced for me automatically really, really quickly. And that's really the whole idea behind this. So what we saw is that I browsed to go, if I save this to a disk or to a uh, folder, I can get my templates uh, there. One of the things when we create a drawing, there's a thing right here that says use default template. There's a config to choose what that default template is. And then when we do the browse to find that, it can browse to a particular folder. So that's really what I just wanted to touch on kind of in closing here is that um, when we use our templates, we can go and Typically browse form, just like I did there, I went to a, a template that, or a folder that I had called templates and I, I pulled it out of there. But there is a config.pro option called start models. If you put your templates, drawing templates in there, when you go to browse for a drawing template, it'll look in that folder first, right? So that's way of categorizing it to a particular folder. Now, if I want a specific template to be used as my default, remember that one button said use the default template, there's a config option called template underscore drawing, and you give it the full path name to where that template is. So for mine, it would be, you know, my C directory, blah, 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 to where that C template um, drawing was. And the thing is, is it is a drawing. So that brings us to this third point, which is pretty important, is when you're setting up your template, you're actually setting it up in a drawing. So you're using your company DTL, your all your uh, configurations for your drawing, use it in that. Um, when you create the template on the fly, it won't read the DTL, right? Because it's just calling up an existing drawing. So remember that, that when you're setting up your template, make sure that you're using all the uh, options that you typically would want to use for a drawing. So now ProE comes along and says, next March or coming up next month, we're gonna have version seven coming out. And what do we wanna do if, to update if some changes have happened in the drawing mode? So there's a hidden config called update drawing, set the value to all, and that will update any changes that have happened in detail mode to make sure that your drawing templates update accordingly, right? So a hidden config, update underscore drawing, set it to all, and then uh, that will help you update um, any changes that have happened going from release uh, to release. So just pause the movie because I know a lot of you guys are gonna rewatch this movie and you can kind of use these, uh, these configs at this point. But that, uh, that brings us to the close of what I wanted to cover. I'm gonna uh, turn it back over to Cassie. Awesome, thank you so much, Bill, for that quick demo on Creo. Um, I, I do hope everyone on this call learned something new. Um, I, I do want everyone to know that we are running a promotion until the end of March. Um, you can get 50% off these um, Creo extensions. Um,